Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is Wine Library TV. What we're doing today is a, a very interesting episode to me, something I think is gonna bring a lot of thunder to the table and really open up some discussion and thought provocativeness. Does that mean anything? Anyway, what I really wanna do is open your mind to Italian white wines. And Italian white wines, as we're getting into the warm weather right now, are just an absolute treat, just perfect with all the fish and the salads and all the light fare that is consumed by us Americans these days, anti-fast uh, food these days. And uh, really what's exciting about these wines is that I feel that their, their values, they're crisp, they're clean, all the great things I love about Loire Valley, you know, ha have a lot of similarities um, to what Italian whites can bring to the table. And most importantly, it has a big, giant, ugly friend that's scaring all the village people away. And that little, giant, ugly, scary friend is Pinot Grigio. And Pinot Grigio is so dominant and so much of what people think about when they think about Italian white wines that there's all these wonderful other wines out there that are running under the radar and are completely bringing it to the table. So we've got four different whites today from different parts of Italy, kind of the south, the central, the north, and, uh, and I'm really excited about uh, trying them. So let's start right away with the Terradora 2006 Falangina. Now Falangina from the Campania area of Italy, this is 11 US dollars. Falangina is really one of my up and coming favorite white varietals in the world, period. I've been consuming quite a bit. I've had the 05 Falangina from Teradora, which I liked quite a bit, nice solid wine. I didn't even realize that we're already into 06, wild. So uh, let's give this a whirl. Now really nice golden color, very golden. Coming through a little, little there you go. You like that, right? It's for you guys, a little sip. Um, very golden, very dark Falangina is a great little grape. Um, a lot of people, because of the price point, have been kind of going here, if we steer them in the right direction, um, that have been traditional Pinot Grigio drinkers. So let's give this a whirl. On the nose, it's really fantastic. Very spritzy, pear, champagne-y kind of nose. Very lively, dancing in your nose. They're having a party in your nose right now. And and the party is with a pear and an apple and they're getting down, you know, they're doing their thing. And, and it's very lively, very zesty, very spring, very 75 degrees outside and you want a cold glass of white wine. Now on WLTV we do all our room temperature. We don't want the cold to hide any of the mistakes or the issues. But very floral as well. I mean, really smells like expensive potpourri that you'd buy mom for uh, Mother's Day, something like that. So it's got a very floral aspect, much more than normal lilacs or things that we get. We're just getting a lot of, getting a lot of floral aspect. Let's give it a whirl. I like this wine. Um, great acidity integrated with the fruit. I'm getting a melon aspect here. I'm also getting a little hints of clove, but I'm getting a little bit more body than you would expect. So kind of imagine this as a cross blend between Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc on its weight. There is a uh, distinct lemon peel flavor, very, very obvious on the finish. I'm still tasting that. That's actually the overriding flavor on the finish. But it's very zesty, very clean, and I like that. It's not globbing in your mouth, um, it's shooting through your palate, kind of like a clean cut, like a very sharp knife. Oh, thank you, Valangina. Now, obviously it's not hurting you, it's pleasing you. It's pleasing your palate. And this is a solid bottle uh, of wine. It's simple, it's not over dramatic, it's not bringing that much to your flavor profile. It's just a clean, simple, apple, pear, lemon zest, uh, getting, a very obvious um, nutty component even on the finish as well. Almost like a walnut flavor which is quite intriguing. I, I like this wine, it's a solid effort. I'm gonna score this wine 88 points. It's, it's a solid, solid bottle of white wine for 11 bones and it's definitely something I recommend seeking out. Let's move on. This is gonna be fun. This is the 2004 Ginny Lafrosca Suave. 16 US dollars, 88 points wine spectator. And Suave, this Suave is 100% Gorgiana uh, grape, which is the main grape in Suave. Now, like a lot of people are starting to use uh, Chardonnay as well. Let me give this a rinse. 
Gorgaina is a really interesting grape from, from this area. And again, a lot of people are starting to use Chardonnay quite a bit in Suave as well. Uh, Trebbiano de Suave is also being used a little bit less. 16 bones, 88 points, so not the greatest QPR white wine score price ratio. So something I don't think a lot of people would seek out off the shelf. But I'm curious to try this. I've had a lot of success with Genie. I think they make some really good wines. And what's interesting about Suave is that because, similar to what Chablis was done in the U.S. with the big jugs, Bola kind of did that with the Suave and Folinati. You could get the big three liter Suave for six, seven, eight bucks not too long ago when I was dusting the shelves at my dad's store. And I think that's really affected people's thought process of what Suave can be. But believe it or not, I believe Suave has tremendous characteristics and some more, more of the interesting complex white wines coming out of Italy altogether. So, you know, don't underestimate Suave because it may catch you with a left hook and you might be down and you'll be like, what just happened? I lost. That's what happens with Suave. It's a crafty veteran. You gotta watch your step. So let's look at it. Really nice, nice color as well. Very, very dark. Let's give it a whirl. Now see, this is beautiful. I mean, this is like like creme brulee, kind of classic cream puff, like cream puffs, right? Those were the, that's the kind of nose you're getting on this. This is very pastry, very bakery on the nose. Uh, dusted sugar or whatever that's called, powdered sugar, coming through very obvious. Yeah, and, and that's beautiful. I mean, how can you not like that? It's a very much uh, an explosion on your nose like, like a pastry shop would be. I mean, it's beautiful, really. Let's give it a whirl. some real elegance on this wine. This is, oof. This is silky stuff. Um, this is like the smoothest uh, pear you've ever eaten. It's extremely driven by pear flavors. Um, I'm also getting great honey uh, suckle kind of ju jumping in there. I'm also getting a little bit of like onion grass on the mid palate, which is very interesting and very different. But the overall mouthfeel is an absolute dream. Going back to the pastry kind of reference, it's almost like a big glop of whipped cream in your mouth. So light, so, you know, so rewarding. And, uh, you know, and, and this is a beautiful effort. Uh, I, I enjoy the honey that's very subtle. That onion grass is really intriguing. The mouthfeel is incredible. I mean, incredible. The kind of mouthfeel you expect from a $75 bottle of Montrachet. Um, I disagree with the wine spectator. I'm gonna go 90 points in this wine. This is an excellent effort and something I think a lot of people would love to seek out. I like that it's 2004 and it's still drinking like a baby. It's a great structure. I'm still tasting this wine. This is a serious bottle of wine. Kudos to Jeannie. This is a very nice wine and a great example of what great Suave can be. Now it's not an inexpensive wine. 16 Bones is, you know, in this wine world of white wines is not inexpensive. So I wouldn't say this is a screaming value, but to me it is. I mean, I think it's a, it's a serious value. 16 Bones, 90 points. Definitely seek this out. If you're looking for something a little different out there in the wine world, this is a great effort. Let's move on. Roca Parnada. 2005 Ribolo Gialla, which is really interesting. From Friuli, 13 US dollars. And uh, Ribolo means reboils and, uh, in Italian, which is in, in the name because this grape tends to re-ferment in the spring when it gets hotter. And Gialla, it means yellow, hence it's yellow. 13 bones, very intriguing wine. Ribolo Gialla is something that's really coming on the scene, very big in Italy, completely under the radar in the US. I mean, like, nobody knows about it. Smoking hot stuff in Italy. I mean, it is being poured at every bistro. It's on fire. So it's really interesting for me, knowing those kind of things, to watch how long is it gonna come. It's kind of like fashion. You know, you see you go over to Europe and the stuff eventually comes over here. This is a very similar concept. 13 bones. Now. That is an absolute, positively inexpensive price for the quality of the wine that's in most Ribolas. However, with no market demand, they just cannot charge the prices that the grapes are kind of worth. So it's gonna be very intriguing in 10 years for me to rewind this episode and laugh when most Ribolas are $40, $50 and in big demand. 
So if you want to get in early and you want to look cool in front of all your wine friends, this is the kind of wine that you want to seek out. Grape varietal. Let's see if this wine's good. There's a lot of people making Herbolo that, and I've, I've not had this. So let's give it a whirl. You can see it's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit of a lighter style. Very, very serious nose, kind of. Almost reminds me of radishes with a little bit of mushroom aspect, but clean mushrooms, not that funky, dirty mushroom smell. Almost like cleaned off mushrooms. Very, um, little, little, little hints of, of almost like a, uh, oh God, sun fruit was, is coming through a little bit. It's a very different kind of wine. It's very tight, too. Now, Friuli is really, to me, the area that produces the best white wines in all of Italy. So, um, it's just really an intriguing area. If you've never gone to that part of the world, you need to seek it out. Take your kids there instead of Disney World. They'll love it. All right, let's give it a whirl. I'm getting a lot of mineral aspects, which is quite nice. Very similar to Sancerre in that matter. Very earth tone driven. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of stone. I'm getting, you know, again, the mushroom aspect I've got to bring in. One of the great things about Ribola is that they go tremendous with cream soups, tomato soup, mushroom soup, um, eggs. Very tough thing to pair with. Omelets. If you're a big wine fan and you don't want coffee or tea with your omelet in the morning, pop open a fresh bottle of Rebola, right? That's a way to get a Sunday morning going. But it's a very intriguing wine and it's a very intriguing grape varietal. This effort is not killing me. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit one-dimensional and that dimension is dull. And nobody likes a dull wine. I'm going to score this wine 86 points. It's just not doing so, so much for me. I built it, right? I built you so up on this great varietal and unfortunately this effort just didn't uh, do the trick. But you know what? There's tons of bad Pinots and they're not bad. There's tons of average dull Pinots and tons of average dull Cabs and tons of average dull Cab Francs and Syrah and Sauvignon Blancs and Chardonnays and Zinfandels and Malbecs and Mavedra and Grenache. I know great varietals. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna have to pass on this effort. But please, Still seek one out because there's some great producers of it. Let's move on. This should be interesting. I've been dying to try this. Um, this is the uh, Baldeschi Donna Ginevra uh, Verdicchio 2005. And Verdicchio is really one of my favorites. And this is 17 US dollars. Very, very, very expensive for Verdicchio, but this is their top cuvee. This is like their big one, the Reserve. This is the Reserve wine at 17 bones. So you can imagine, you know, what kind of value Verdicchio tends to be. Again, very nice color, very crisp golden color coming through. And this is gonna be fun, I think. It's got a great zesty nose. You know, right now, I am like salivating for raw fish, oysters, light salads, you know, cold potato salad, for example, is a tremendous dish with uh, Italian white wines. I really believe, in my heart, and I can see by sales, and I pay attention to the vibe, I'm like, I got the pulse on the wine world, that this is the one category that here in the US, we have no clue how great and profound the efforts are from Italy, and especially the white wines. We're very, very into the Tuscany and the Piedmont, but we just do not give credit to the white wines. Again, going back, because Pinot Grigio really dominates, and there's so much more than this. We're gonna have to do more as the summertime comes, but I'm just, I'm really enjoying this, this episode, because these wines are clean, crisp, and well-made. None of these wines are disjointed. None of them feel like there's some science project going on. And, you know, the purity of what these wines are should be commended. And, and, you know, going now through the fourth wines, I mean, it's just really obvious. This has a smokiness that is so beautiful. Like a smoked, like a smoked ham smell, but minus the ham. And very obvious little hints of pineapple and mango. Very tropical that way, but not that sweet tropic flavor. Just much more subdued. Almost like a... 
like a cool, brisk summer evening. You know, it's just that it's got that in the air, especially if you're in a you know in, in an apple tree farm area. You know, so really nice, very very interesting. Let's give it a whirl. Hmm. Wow, the second wine we've had now with pure elegance on your palate. I mean, really, honestly, it is a black tie affair in your mouth. And, you know, sometimes it was black tie affairs. People aren't that elegant. For example, I go to them, I pick the food with my hands. I'm terrible, no napkin. My mom and wife go crazy. But this is true elegance, very polished. I mean, just completely goes down your mouth and your palate. My, my palate is extremely happy with me right now with this effort. Um, I'm getting a lot of cantaloupe on this wine. I'm also getting a little, and this is gonna get weird a little bit, but I'm really tasting it pretty pretty obviously. There is a, there's a definite sense of avocado on this wine, which is quite intriguing. Um, very zesty, very clean. Very good. Oh man, this is real good. Uh, I'm gonna go 90 points on this wine as well. I mean, two ninety pointers under twenty bucks, white wines, everyday consumption kind of stuff. Not sixteen to seventeen bucks every day, but nonetheless, I'm extremely impressed with this effort. It is an absolute polished dream. Um, once again, this makes me think of tea, and when I think about tea, when I taste wine, I, I guess I always go back to the fine, refined oolong, silver needle stuff. You know, just the white cloud tea that I had per se just always brings me back there. I think the beauty of the purity of the flavors uh, is what my brain and my palate are, are making that analogy. And this is just a clean wine. This is a Mr. Clean wine. You need to definitely seek it out. Great effort. I, I really, really hope, and please do me a favor, one of the first things you drink this summer and spring, go seek out four to six wines, under $20, different Italian whites. There's so many interesting wines. Question of the day. Gonna get a little tech on you. What is your favorite social network website? I'd like to know. I'm really into the web thing. Are you a MySpace person? Facebook? Something else? Verb? Is that something? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.